Hello, I'm Hashem and I'm a Sales and Applications Engineer here at Clearview. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of recognized machine vision standards and what to consider when choosing an interface for your application. First, we will look at the history and how things improved. Secondly, we will cover the current options on the market because as you will see, there are quite a few different choices. Thirdly, we will look at how to choose an interface and cover real life examples in the machine vision industry. In the very early days of machine vision, it was all fairly simple. The interface between the cameras and frame grabbers was analog and was governed by TV standards like CCIR or RS-170. The first digital interface became available in the 1980s. Because many manufacturers designed their own digital interface, this led to many different creations that were not compatible with each other. There were a host of different connectors, cable types and transport methods. Even though efforts were made to simplify the integration of the digital cameras with standard frame grabbers, it was still a real task to physically connect these parts, let alone setting the relevant DCFs and timing in order to get a good image. This took time and often more than one attempt to get it right. This is the Matrox PIP512. This was one of the first PC frame grabbers in the world and it was released back in the mid 1980s. The cost and complexity required to set up this system and capture images was huge by today's standards. In today's money, the board would cost between five and six thousand pounds. It could buffer one frame and had 256 kilobytes of memory. The associated cabling required was really complex and the setup was certainly not plug and play. Standardization has been a huge leap forward and has helped to accelerate the growth and adoption of machine vision technology globally. We now have lots of choice when it comes to recognizing machine vision standards and interfaces. There are professional bodies working together globally to ensure standardization and compatibility across interfaces. From the AIA who host the GigiVision, USB 3.1 Vision, CameraLink and CameraLink High Speed Standards to GIIA in Japan who host the Core Express. These organizations work with leading global manufacturers and trade bodies like the VDMA, CMVU to ensure the coordinated development and improvement to these standards. Now, what does this all mean? It means CXP camera from one vendor with plug and play reliably with a frame grabber from another. So although we are leaps and bounds ahead of where we were, the world of machine vision interfaces is still complicated with many different options. All of the key standards have developed and improved over the years. The common interface options we are familiar with today are evolving rapidly. Faster, higher resolution sensors are driving the development of higher bandwidth, more power, longer cable lengths and lower latency communication between camera and host PC. So this still creates some difficulty when you come to actually specify an interface for your specific application. I work with these standards daily and it takes some focus to keep up with the latest developments. So we end up with a lot of choice and it's not always clear which way to go when selecting a suitable interface for a specific application or what criteria to use to assist with the decision making process. So what I'm going to try to do here through the use of a couple of examples is to outline the key areas for consideration when you come to make that choice. So let's look at the options. We start here with low complexity, low cost, USB 3.1 and Gigi interfaces. Here we have high consumer acceptance. Consumer level PCs are equipped with Gigi and USB ports as standards. This means very simple integration due to the benefits of plug and play. 5 and 10 Gigi is slightly more complex because they usually require a dedicated network interface card. The advantage however is that you can achieve a bandwidth of up to 10 gigabits per second. Another big pro 
is that these cables can support this bandwidth at length of up to 100 meters. With camera link you can start to move towards true dedicated industrial machine vision interfaces. These require a dedicated frame grabber. A frame grabber is essentially the gateway between the PC and the interface. With camera link high speed we can move a lot of data over long distances using copper cables and stretch that further with optical cables but it does not support the powering of the unit over that connection. CoExpress 1 and 2 offer strong all-round performance with power over cable and further advances planned through the introduction of CXP over fiber, but you can see as cable length and data rates increase, so too does cost and complexity. Equipped with the basic overview, we can now start to make decisions based on relatively simple frameworks. Let's look at the four key criteria that will help you decide which interface is the most suitable for any given application. We will then take some real world examples and put these criteria to the test. There will always be factors to consider outside of these four areas, but these will give you the basic understanding. Let's start with bandwidth. Imagine the interface as a vehicle that needs to transport data between the camera and the PC. We need to understand how much data we need to carry and with this we can decide what type of vehicle to use. We calculate this by starting with the required camera resolution for your application. We then need to know the required frame rate or how many times per second we need to take an image of our object to carry out the required function. While looking at the bandwidth, remember that moving objects require more frames per second than static images to capture the change in the image. Once you have your resolution, frame rate and an understanding of what image you need, for example color or mono, you can do a simple calculation to understand how many megabytes per second you need to transport from the camera to your host PC. The formula for this is the resolution of the sensor times by frame rate times by bit depth in bytes. Cable length is also important. In simple desktop applications, this could be a meter or so, with potentially hundreds of meters for remote projects, for example, sports applications inside stadiums. Budget is always a consideration. There will always be a wide range of budgets in machine vision, and whatever you're designing, low-cost handheld scanners or creating multi-million pound vision inspection systems, your project will often be commanded by budget. Do you have the hardware set up to accommodate frame grabbers? These are questions that want confident answers in order to ensure success on your own. But if you need a complicated system and aren't sure of the finer details, you can always consider working with a machine vision specialist such as Clearview. Finally, complexity. Do you have the know-how and experience to work with one of the more complex interfaces? And do you have the hardware set up to accommodate frame grabbers? These are questions that want confident answers in order to ensure success on your own. But if you need a complicated system and aren't sure of the finer details, you can always consider working with a machine vision specialist, such as Clearview, if that's not your area of expertise. Now, that we have an understanding of the previous points, it's now just a process of elimination to find a suitable interface. So we look here at a relatively simple vision application. This is a product of ours called Vision Box. It's a static offline inspection system with no moving parts. We need five megapixel resolution per camera with multiple cameras to cover various inspection tasks. We only need to trigger at 1 frames per second while all of the cameras are running in sync. So no moving parts or requirements for high speed, no need for very high resolution. However, we do need the ability to scale from 5 to 30 or 40 cameras depending on the size of the object to be inspected. The cable length of the project does not need to be longer than 10 meters. In this case, we look at a simple 5 megapixel, 1 frames per second triggered setup. We first calculate the required bandwidth for each camera. 
We mentioned the formula earlier as resolution times by frame rate times by bit depth. If you make this calculation, this gives you 5,038,848 bytes per second. This needs to be divided by 1,048,567 to convert bytes in megabytes, which equals to 4.8 megabytes per second. Now, if you round that up to 5 megabytes per second, it gives us 0.04 gigabits per second. This bandwidth is low, so we can focus on the lower end of the scale in terms of interface bandwidth. Because the bandwidth is so low, we have the option to run multiple cameras on one bus via switch. So standard gigi, one gigabits per second, gives us low cost and we can potentially save further by running 20 plus camera on one gigabus. For the synchronization, the PTP protocol could be used. We also have scalability and overhead for future resolution increases. So Gigi would be a strong contender in this case. In the UK, we have many companies involved in the development of automated vehicles and vision forms a key part of these applications. In this case, they need high resolution and high speed because of the level of detail required for the software to do its magic and the speed of the vehicle itself as it moves around. They need power over cable for simplicity and low latency, low noise imaging. They have vision expertise and can accommodate complex setups. Such engineering teams often want to carry out pre-processing to take some overhead from the host PC and an FPGA enabled frame grabber would be suitable here. So we do the sums again to give us our data rate and in this case, 11.4 gigabits per second. This narrows the field to camera link high speed or CXP based on the options we compared today. Camera link high speed can't provide power over cable. So CXP is looking good in that respect. CXP1 can handle the bandwidth over two cables or CXP2 over one. It's scalable. You can run multiple cameras into one frame grabber and there are frame grabber options to do the FPGA pre-processing. CXP is low latency and low noise, which is crucial for these kind of application. There is good support for CXP across a number of vendors, so there are various hardware options for comparison. So in this case, CXP1 using 2 times 6.5 gigabits per second was selected, as it was easier to handle in the FPGA compared to the 12 gigabits per second input. Standardization gives us confidence of compatibility with cameras from one vendor playing nicely with software from another. With the emergence of governing bodies and global partnerships, it's now relatively easy to source the information you need to make sound interface selection decisions with confidence. Even though it is complex, once you have a basic grasp of the key parameters of each interface, you can use the four pillars of bandwidth, cable length, cost and complexity to assist with interface selection. There is much more to each interface than I can cover today. And there's a lot of great documentation available online and from the hosting bodies. If you consider where we are today with the ability to commonly run a 4K camera at 60 FPS over one cable versus where we were 20 years ago, you can get a good idea as to the rate of evolution. It's exciting to think where we will be in another 20 years. So we spoke about the different parameters today and one of them was complexity. Now in complexity, you might need machine vision experts. And in that case, we have our team here at Clearview who's happy to support you and is always available whenever you need us. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or head over to our contact page on our website. Thank you.